welcome Davy Forbes to what's a, a virtual podcast essentially on Zoom. Uh, how you been, Davy? You good? I am good, man. I am good in the studio. Well, I've not been in much, but I'm, I'm trying, you know, Aye. stay positive in these crazy times. Absolutely. We've, um, we've had a couple of these Zoom, podca- uh, Zoom podcasts and uh, they've been, everyone's in the same boat. All, all the guys that are making music and whatever else, try to keep positive, try to, like, you know, stay into a routine. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's crazy times. That is that. You find just like music wise, Davey, you're getting much done at the moment because I know you said you've got a couple of deadlines and things. So, how are you finding kind of getting through the work? You know, I'll, I'll be honest, I mean, I think I think it's a lot easier for people that um, maybe have their stu- maybe, maybe I'm, I'm just guessing, talking off the top of my head here, you know, but maybe for guys that are maybe part time but still releasing a lot of music, but have been working their studios in the house. This is an ideal opportunity for those guys that that have been maybe furloughed or, you mm-hmm. know, that, that aren't are working from home and maybe give those people a lot more time and opportunity to get cracked on with some studio stuff. I think for me, you know, with my with my studio not being in the house, you know, it's it's sometimes very difficult. I can access the studio, you know, but it's 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 certain sub areas not at school. Yeah, Mrs. is a nurse. She works night shift. You know, like we spoke earlier, Stevie. I can't. I don't really feel comfortable taking a home setup home and you know and bashing it out when she's trying to get asleep when she's been dealing with you know. Um, well, she, this? Hi, she's on the front line. You know what I mean? Wow. You know. So, um, I have been trying to get into the, the studio as much as I can, but. Um, and I'm trying to stay positive. I'm trying to still do exercise. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm running, I mean, I always went out running, but I'm running more than I've ever run, you know, and, and I, I should be getting into the studio more, but sometimes I, I just don't, it just feels like a bank holiday Monday every day. <laughs> it does. You know, no concept just, of what day it is, for sure. You know, it's just, it's, 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 it's very, it's very difficult. I'm not, I wouldn't say it's difficult to stay positive. It's not because I'm quite a positive guy in general, you know, but at the same time, you know, it's not it's not been as easy, and I think, you know, I think everybody's in the same boat. It's not been as easy just to go right. That's it. We're going to get cracked on today and stuff like that. You know, but I, like I said, I have got deadlines, so I'm I'm trying to meet those deadlines. Oh. Is like, your workload changed at all? Like since this has kicked off, are you still working on similar projects, or have you switched it up a bit to doing some other stuff? Like, um, I think, I don't think nothing's changed for me, Steve, because I, I I'm always kind of doing different stuff. Uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> You know, if I'm, if, you know, I worked on that, that, um, that George Bowie and Spark Horse Heroes track. You know, that was a Which bit is, Yeah, that was doing really well there as well, wasn't it? I think it's, I think it's playlisted, airlisted in the radio and stuff like that, you know, so. Brilliant. You know, it, was, it was just one thing, you know, they asked me if I could play a MIDI part and knowing me, man, I've ended up playing cellos and strings and bass notes and <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got a bit carried away. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, I so that was a wee bit different. That's totally different, be kind of popular stuff, you know. So, and I'm I'm always still trying to do the house stalker stalker stuff, but no, no, I mean nothing's changed. No, I've not really, I've not really tried to delve into new, different types of music. I'm still working on techno stuff and yeah, yeah, and stuff, and you know, oh. just finished one there with Mark. I'm just putting you know the finishing touches to it and. Um, <clears throat> I am I'm doing a lot of acid infused stuff at the moment, you know. For the techno side? I more the techno, just big kind of gabba kicks. Right. Big see. distortion. Aye, you know, just taking it right back to Aye. the nine. Well so, we spoke sure a couple of weeks ago and you were in the studio with Willie D and you were making some uh, quarantine gabba techno. Ah, you know, it's just it just seems to I've I've, I've made a few. And every time I play them, mate, they just it just wrecks the gaff. Aye. Well, no, it's no, out there, though. It's a complete switch up of sound, isn't it? Aye, you know what I mean? You don't need any bass lines, Stevie. Just, just a as kick. Aye, you just I start off with one kick, then I'm I'm grabbing, you know, a great wee tick. I'm grabbing, I'll start off with a, a, a kick that I'm happy with, then I'll maybe have another five or six layers. But it's not like, it's like five or six layers of different hard style kicks. Aye. 
the bottom end ripped off him, so it's just giving me tonal layers. I got you. You know, then aye. Aye, just burning that down to one channel, compressing it again. Is it going back to like the old school, like really stripped back, simple hardcore that was kind of like that? You know, it's just like one kick distorted, you know, and very limited layers. So obviously, you're saying you're learning a wee bit more there, but do you feel you're going back to that kind of hard? I, I, I think the fundamentals of getting the, the, the grounding, the groundwork done, you know, with the bottom end, with the kicks and stuff like that, then after that, you don't really need, all you need is a hi hat, a clap, a ride. Aye. A couple of stuff, techno things. You're in the, you know, in a, a breakdown for <laughs> rip for an old hardcore tune. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, the thing is, so that's that's the beauty of it, and it's like revitalising a lot of this old stuff in a bit of a new way. Which, to be honest, as you say, it smashes the dance floor. See, because even like even if you're playing a full techno set or a full trance set or whatever, it's like to a degree, it's kind of easy. So see if you just actually fling something in there that's like they're not expecting it, but it takes it up another level. Man, that's that can only be a good thing, especially for the diehards that are wanting it. Yeah. I think, I think, do you know what? I think I, I was. I mean, I'm probably going off, off track a wee bit here, but just with the, going back to the lockdown thing, I was driving into the studio the day, and before I, before I, before I took off, I just scanned Instagram, and um, I know everybody's doing live streams and stuff like that, but. Um, I seen the uh, Dream State had posted a live stream, and see when I seen the flyer, I get a wee kind of. I was talking to Mark about this earlier. I get a wee kind of feeling in my stomach. I mean, you, I don't know. Prior to the lockdown, you look at a live stream and you just look at it as a live stream. Mm-hmm. But when I looked at that Dream State live stream, it kind of gave me. I didn't say the full on, but it kind of gave me a wee bit of the same feeling as I'd love to be involved in that. As if uh, it was a guy. Ah, yeah. You know, and I don't know if this full thing, because nobody knows when this is effectively going to end. Okay, we can all start going back to work and it's going to drip feed people back to work here and there. But when it comes to the music industry, yeah. all different countries are going to have different... Um, regulations and that. Regulations in place, yeah. you know. So it's not as easy as jumping on a plane anywhere and going and doing a gig. Nah. The same people, I've seen that Gary Femery is charging 10 quid. I heard this week. I've seen people are raging about it. <laughs> Twitch streaming stuff like that. And I looked at Twitch and it looks a decent platform. You can subscribe and stuff like that. But then I'm taking it back to is this is this is this the way do you know shoot me down if I'm just talking absolute horse shit here? But you know, see the way we, we transitioned from vinyl to digital. Mm-hmm. And people were giving it, nah, that'll never work. See the way you went from terrestrial TV to Netflix, and Aye. people were giving it, that'll never work. Aye. Is there a wee bit of that keeping through with this live stream? So a DJ's getting it, well, why should I jump in a plane for 24 hours when I can do a live stream to a thousand people and charge them a dollar a time? Yeah. And make I mean, them a, you know I, what I mean? No, no, I think that's a very, very, very valid point and these circumstances have like opened all that up probably through necessity though like for for them obviously wanting to make money and still do gigs but in a safer situation yeah but then 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 on the on maybe the maybe on the the flip side of that or the negative side i'm thinking so say it did go down that route then i think you would find a lot more artists and djs no even releasing on other labels, no interacting with other labels, keeping mm. it all house. So they're selling their product and their product only through their portals. Yeah. And the nobody, you know, does it could that even just could that even could that even maybe I wouldn't say would it be the end, it wouldn't be the end of beat port and stuff like that, but if it gets more you know, that way, yeah, you're that's just dependent, you're, I think. Like, because it's like, uh, you, David, we've been talking about that for a few years. Like, you know, like the, the rise of everyone having their own label and, and everyone putting more stuff out in their own thing. And the value of maybe releasing on other people's labels, not being as, not being as much, um, you know, as maybe building your own thing. Yeah. Maybe this and the live streams and stuff like that. If you want to go and see like Gareth Henry, then you, you, you buy his tunes, you watch his live stream, and that's it. It's just all of his stuff. I don't know, it's mad. It's a totally different way of thinking about it. I think it's a cool idea. I do. I think more ownership to the artists is probably only a good thing and, you know, maybe taking it away from all the bigger, big ones. But, I mean, I think also, though, what see once maybe gigs start opening up, do you think it's going to happen that 
like let's say you like you would get booked to go and play in Berlin, but instead now they're going to get someone that's based in Berlin. You know, so I wonder if more things like that are going to start happening. That more Glasgow. Well, hang on. Glasgow here's something to really think about. Like, what if the Scottish scene was like, you know, it was given a kick up the ass in terms of loads and loads of more wee nights, smaller like parties and things like that. Like, you know, all like a maybe could be cool. Could be it, it could be it could be one of those things. It, as you say, it's like when TV changed over to kind of internet and all that. It's like it is one of these things because right now people are going. There's no way live streams are going to be where I'm going to pay and watch all this and that. But, you know, how many times have we been wrong? And we just seen that article, I think we shared, and it was talking about a drive-in movie thing now we're going to start doing. Oh, so, Germany started that, didn't they? Aye, well, the DJ's going to play up the stage and you just arrive in your car and watch it for the car, tune into your radio or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, so, then, then you just go to them. I mean, as, as, as the, the people that went clubbing, you know, it, I don't think they're going to be satisfied with just sitting. You don't want a society like that anyway. We're born to interact. Aye. You know, we're born to meet up with people. We're born to gathering crowds. I, th yeah. I think, you know, I don't I want to be... back, yeah, definitely. You know, I've been isolating for 25 years in my studio. I like the fact that I get out and I Aye. meet people and I gag and the streets are busy and everybody's interacting. I don't want to live in a society where we're all cooped up in our houses. At the, at the next, oh no, another breakout of virus, Aye. everybody indoors again, let's stay Aye. in, and, you know, and it just, I don't want to live in that society, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed the way I was living, that's cool, <laughs> you know what I mean, then this fucking thing comes along and just fucks it. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, another way I look at it though, at least we're not getting dragged away to war or something like that, you know what I mean, because if this had been another time, us three would be prime candidates, man. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> I, get, so, I get what you're saying. There's, there's a perspective to be had. It could be worse, you know, that. You know, it's, it's, it's all right for us on sitting here getting a good chat and stuff, but I, it's, it's, it's imagine it's what's happening out there. Do you know I, what mean? I mean, there's, look, there's people dying. It's serious, I you know. know. I think we always need to remember that. that totally. There's, there's the people out there putting their lives in the line. I know. You know my missus every night, and along with all, all the rest of the NHS workers and delivery drivers and all the essential oh. services and stuff like that, you know. So I, th I don't think, you know, I don't think any is a losing sight of, you know. Totally. That's what's totally happening. But um, it's just, it's, 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 it's just, it's been, I think the last six and seven weeks has been a, a bit of a culture shock for the whole world. <sighs> Massively. It's something you don't think you're ever going to live through. And then it's no. happening. No. <laughs> you know, and I think that, I watched that Contagion, is that what it's called? Contagion? <laughs> Aye, aye, aye. I was, I was, so I, I only watched that a couple of weeks ago, and I'm thinking, Man. see all they mad? mad? Oh, I'm saying mad, but see all people out smashing toilet rolls and all that, stockpiling? They've all seen that. Aye. <laughs> oh, aye. Oh, dude, they've watched that, and I've went, oh, shit. I need to get my toilet rolls in order here, man. Aye. <laughs> Do you know, Jack was saying this morning that he was at his work, and he's seen a guy in uh, one of the supermarkets, and he said he was pretty much wearing a full hazmat suit. Walk, walking about, he said he's seen a guy, and I was like, no way. I mean, it's getting that crazy. Well, I was wanting to ask you, David, before it kind of went into lockdown, what was the schedule like? Did you have some gigs in that lined up? Did you have things yeah. happening? So obviously, all of that's flipped in his head now. Yeah, you know, I had gigs all lined up. You know, me and Mark were just back from Taiwan the oh. week before. That's oh. right. That's right. So we were, you know, and, and you know, and we were a bit paranoid about going, you know, but I mean, it was clean that it had all these automatic hand sanitizers and stuff like that, but it's bizarre. You know, um, we, we, you know, you fly all the way over there and you're trying to wear the mask, you feel a bit awkward wearing the mask, then you get to Dubai and you see more and more people wearing the mask, then you get to Taiwan, you know, not as many people was wearing a mask as I thought. So you wear the mask all the way there, you get to the club and nobody's wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. The place where you think they would be? The, the place where you think it's going to, you know, you've got a thousand people in a building on top of each other. Yeah. You know, then you, know, you fly all the way over there to know wear a mask then. I mean, I'll be honest, when I, when I came back, Five days later, I wasn't well for about a week. I had a rash and all that. The day I came back, I came back to Monday and I went to football training and I had a rash all over my legs. And I was going, holy fuck, what the fuck's this? You know, and, and, you know, and 
I was ill for about a week. So I, I genuinely think, I think everybody says, oh, I've had it. But I genuinely do think... Maybe I, picked I, it up? I, 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 I picked it up. So, I, so I, do. I, I genuinely think I did pick it up. Well, that means you've got antibodies then. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, the amount of Red Bull I drink anyway would kill it anyway. It wouldn't even get <laughs> it by the front door. You know? <laughs> Directly, like, yeah, I read, I the, the Red Bull Mafia just stoning at my lungs, giving it no chance for the table. <laughs> it's such a crazy time. It's such a crazy time. So, just tunes wise, you've got you were saying you've got a couple of deadlines sort of happening soon, <laughs> which you know you're going to need to turn around quite quickly. Now, I don't have any doubts because it's Super Davey Forbes, but yes. I mean, what? So, what? What's in the pipeline? What's coming out? What are you? What, can you, what can you tell us about Davey? Um, I'm, I can pretty much, you know, I've got, I've got, I finished a, 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 co- a collab with um, Lossley, uh, which is like a talented uh, guy. Ah, a techno trance. I opened it. I opened it. It was my first track at a state of trance. I've done a wee edit and stuff like that, and it's quite techno-y and um, three and it's, it's, it's not your kind of running the remote norm. It's, I think it's one thirty-six BPM. So that's that's locked in for. A, a release on um, Outburst. It's funny because I've got that one locked in with Lossley, kind of acid day. Then I've, I've done a wee collab with um, Will Reese. That's kind of locked in with... I've gave Mark quite a bit. I like working with Mark, you know. He's, Aye. He's, you know, it's just it's a, no, it's a no-brainer, man. And, and then I've, I've signed another track to Mark that's it's like 140 techno, mate. Aye. Like... It's like my it's like my normal stuff with the rolling bass lines, but the the main hook is like <clears throat> a craft. Is what's that? What that called a craft? No craft work, but that who's the other craft? The techno guys. Pleasure craft. Pleasure craft. It's like one of their riffs. Right. Cool. Say, that's the only thing I can describe Those you know, techno riffs are getting so like trans riffs, so it's hard to. See, these days it's so diverse in terms of like, you know, try to pinpoint what's what. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? But I'm interested to hear that one, Dave. That sounds, that sounds amazing. Well, I'll let you hear it. Once we're finished, I'll, I'll, I'll let you, I'll, I'll send it. Any wee secret weapons you can send over for a wee, a wee cheeky listen, that'd be good. Did you get the, did you get the main control thing for Tech Burst? I would have got that. When did that come out? It's, no, it's, it's out in um, a week. Yeah, it's out this Monday, so it is. But cool. it's... I'll have that there then. There's two there. There's two. There's two tracks. It's it's killing, man. The two tracks are killer. So there. So I mean, I've got maybe four or five tracks. Th- 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 these techno things finished yeah. with Mark collab with Will Reese, Lossley, Paul Denton on FSOE, and um, I'm kind of I'm tied up, you know, for the Aye. next four or five months, and that's without actually delving into the stuff that I've got lying in my desktop. So I totally. Yeah, if the the more experimental gear or. I that I've not sent away. I'm working in a new Hal Stucker album. Four, four or five tracks into that. So um, you know, so I'm just. I'm, I'd as, as love well to see it. another uh, wee collab between you two because the last one was magic. And I always yeah, say it, man. I'm going to make it happen again because that, that track was great. It was something totally different, wasn't it? It was. Loved it. Was, it. Loved it. It was a great it, session. I don't even think there's been anything like it since then. If I'm being honest. Nah. What a vibe. I know. It was very musical. It was very, I don't know, it's like, not to say that like, you know, we're no musicians, but it was like people rocked up with keyboards and tried different yeah. stuff. And it was like, you know, do you know what I mean? Actually, got all, I remember you jammed it that wee bit at the end and I think it was on Omnisphere or something like that. A Rhodes piano type vibe. Yeah. And it was just like a jam. It wasn't too, you know what I mean? Brilliant. The two regimented. Totally. I'm sure, I'm sure. Davey, I'm sorry, I was, I was wanting to butt in there and ask what's happening with your label, with Aria and that, what's happening, is there stuff going on there? Because obviously, again, with lockdown, are you, are you finding a lot of people are sending you stuff? Or? Yeah, I, you know what, I'm, I'm kind of locked in until the end of July. I've got a, um, I've got, I've got a right few tracks coming out. One for Mikey Marr called Annihilation, that's really cool. And, you know, another one for a boy called Dante, a couple of Irish producers, which is cool. really cool. Right, it's really, really cool. I'm kind of, um, I have to, I've got, you know what, I have to tap my head. I can't, I, those two I do remember, but there's one um, for 
uh, Andy Sharkey and Graham McFarlane, they, they had an idea that the, the they, they put together and I just kind of put the finishing touches to it, but it's it's killing me. You know, I've kept that track, you know, so I've maybe got four or five tracks locked in as well as my own stuff. You know, I maybe get another another couple that I could probably put it in the, the label track time off. You know, I've been playing all the... It's, see, the good thing about it is because I've been gigging a wee bit more. I've been getting the chance to, to play my own stuff out a lot more and road mm -hmm. test it rather than seeing other people play it and I'm giving it off, that's killer. Aye. You know, it's good to get that initial playing it for the first time reaction. Aye, the, gig, the gigs have been amazing, mate, watching them. Aye, the, you know, it's, it's, it has been good. The, 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 the last year was good, Stephen. It was, it was class, you know, the tail end of, Do you know what? I don't even... What month are we in now? This is the thing, man. We're halfway through <laughs> the year, really, man. I mean, I don't, I mean, the last maybe eight months, nine months, gig-wise, have been really, 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 really cool. And it's good to be touring quite a bit with Mark as well, you know. It's, yeah, that's brilliant. It's brilliant. How did the State of Trance go then? Because like, that is a monumental stage, that. Like, I love, yeah. I, do you know what, mate? It was amazing. That, like I said before, when I was talking to a couple of other people, you've done another podcast. And, you know, it's one of these things, because you've been doing it that long, Steve, you know, it was one of those gigs that, um, you chase it, don't you? Aye. Chase the career, mate. You know, I, I did. You know, just one of those iconic gigs. I'd love to play that. Aye. I'd love to play that. And um, and yeah, then, then, yeah. I Bram said, look, you know, you're not doing luminosity this year, and I was getting ah gutted. He said, but I've got you a state of trance, you know, and I was giving it wow, amazing. I was I was absolutely delighted. Probably the most nervous I've ever been. How did you cope with that beforehand, Davey? Like, we, what was your day like before it and all that? You know, do, do you know what was great? I went, we went on a Friday, and I went, I, um, Jack came over with me, Jack's sister, and Jack's, Jack's sister's been seeing my best mate, you know, for the last four years or so, you know, so the four days went over, and we, we had that absolutely, it was just a brilliant weekend, mate. We went over on the Friday, came home on the, the Sunday, and just, you know, it was good, it was good that they were there, because, they kind of settled my nerves through the day because yeah. you know what it's like, mate. Seeing you get a big gig, that's yeah. all you can think about. Yeah. Right up until you do it, right up. And see, 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 sometimes you say, I'll be cool after my first track. But I, I think that that environment's slightly different because you know the whole world or the whole trans community is watching you. Yeah. You know, for <laughs> your full set. Yeah. You know, you know, your set's getting recorded, you know, it's live. You know, so you're so many different things now to think about. Like, this is live. I'm doing this set. There's the whole, not to mention the thousands and thousands of people there, but like, again, having to think about all. I've not done a set that's been live as well, like that. Do you know what I mean? It's an extra level. You know, oh, maybe add to the nerves. Of course, because then you need to make sure all your cue points are on, on, you know, on, on point. You know, you need to make sure all your edits are done. You know, it's not a gig for rocking up with 20 tracks and hoping for the best. For no. me, anyway, you know, Aye. I really prepared for it. I got all my edits done, you know, I got a lot of new tracks done, you know, yeah. and I wanted to make sure that I was prepared. You know, even watching it back, you can see I'm enjoying it, but inside, <laughs> inside, <laughs> it's, turmoil, turmoil. You know, it's turmoil, right? Where's your next cue point? You know, it's, it's, it's this mix has got to be tight. The next yeah. mix has got to be tight. You know, and it's bizarre because, because, see, because there's that many lights, for that whole set, I didn't see the crowd. Maybe uh, once or twice. I didn't see it. I couldn't see anybody until the end of my set. Aye. And, man, and then, and then the, the, the adrenaline dump, when you see everyone at the end, when you're like, I've nailed it. Like, uh, you know, it's probably you, a good thing that you don't see them, because then you're <laughs> taken out and all. It's, it's rather just keep them out of sight, out of mind, and then yeah. you can focus once you've done your job. I can see because I was on last, see because I was closing, I didn't really want to go down the route of playing any classics. I wanted to stay as upfront as possible. I wanted yeah. to put all my new stuff. You know, yeah. I, I, I wanted to be for it to be quite exclusive. You know, and I think I've had a, sometimes when you see the crowd and your brain tells you, you know what it's like with a big a bigger crowd. You know, you don't see them all giving it the here we f and go part. Aye. You know, it's it's quite kind of. They're all dancing, you know, but it's... They're all cracking on with their own thing, like, because it's so vast. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know, so you, sometimes you get sucked into that, oh, no, I need to play a big one. 
you know, and I didn't, I, I'm glad I didn't have to do that. I'm glad I just stuck to my guns, played all my new stuff, played a couple of bits and pieces for Mark, one for Paul, and oh, right. 90% of it was all my, my own stuff. And, and, and I, But I was nervous for the minute I got there to the minute I left. All right. I mean, what's talk us a wee bit through, like, see, obviously, apart from that, like, normally, how would you go about planning a set? And a lot of the time, is it you're rocking up with 20, 30 tunes and going, right, I kind of, I've got an idea how this is going to go. Because obviously, something like that, you're putting a lot more effort in, you do not want to make any mistakes. But someone with yourself, your experience you've got, you know, what, how usually would you go about it? Because you're obviously, you put a lot into that. Yeah, I think I think normally you just need to be prepared. You know, you, you, um, I mean, I'll, I'll tend to I'll tend to make sure. I, I, for years and years, Stevie, I never I never I struggled to play my own music. I don't know if it was a confidence thing or mm -hmm. or what it was. I just struggled to play, whereas everybody else is playing it. You know, and and I just really struggled to play my own productions. Didn't yeah. think they were good enough. Didn't think they were loud enough. Didn't think it was, you know, I don't know what it was. Aye. Well, but maybe in the last four years. Sounds familiar. I know, I'm laughing, I'm laughing. Sounds familiar. I've been, I've been really, but do you know, do you know what, do you know what, do you know what changed it for me, Stevie? You know what changed it? I started, I started writing. For me, I was thinking to myself, right, it's great having 200 channels and, you know, doing all the sketchy stuff and all that. You know, that's great. You know, and, and being a bit, being a bit arsy about being a producer and stuff like that. And I just thought, you know, no, I'm, I'm a DJ as well. Mm -hmm. I need to playing tunes that people are going to be losing their shit to. Aye. I need to start writing music like that. Aye. I need to start writing music more catered for the dance floor. And I'm not saying that I've, I've never done that before, but I, I made sure it was always in my thinking when I'm writing the track. Is that drop big enough? Mm. Is that section too long? Is there too much in that? Right. Learn what does he? Does he need another layer? Aye. Another bass line. Does he need another fucking counter melody? Yeah. Because it just it just ends up getting too messy. Too much. So you you simplified it all then by realizing that, and then that's what made you you know gain more confidence in it. Do you think? I I just think I got to a point where I played a couple of the the newer stuff, the more kind of techier stuff that I was writing. I was giving it. No, they're fucking killer. Mm. Well, they are good. You know, and just kind of gained a wee bit more. I mean, I've been doing this 20 odd, 25 year plus. Right. It's only took me the last five or six years to actually give it. Because I'm playing 90% of my own stuff now. Yeah. Because I feel confident in playing. Aye. And then it doesn't really come down to like having it been as loud as something else or whatever else, because you're creating your own soundscape anyway. Yeah. So they get used to that sonic experience, don't they, I suppose, if it's just your stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy with my own bass lines. I'm, I, I know I, I've got a style again. Aye, that's cool. I've, I've got my own sound. I know what my sound is. I know what my sound is in the tech trance. I know what my sound is in the trance. I know what my sound is in the techno. The acid the techno. I know what Hal Stucker's all about. Yeah, and it's doing that. Aye, that's brilliant. For Jay Kitts, don't send to the studio. <laughs> see, I think this is good though for people to see because, like, you know, they, they look up to guys like you and Stephen and what you are doing musically and stuff. And obviously, Davey, you've been at, at this a long time, and it, it just shows you though, no matter how big you're at in the scene, no matter where you're at, confidence is genuinely one of the biggest things that holds 90% of us all back. Yeah. And it's like, even, even myself, I see it with myself, and people will consider, oh, big gal, he's a big confident guy. Don't get me wrong, there's times I am, but there's other times where I'm like, I maybe haven't put myself out there the way I'd like to, because I'm like that, you know, freaking out. So it's funny, and it's also reassuring to hear it from guys like yourself and other people that say, like, you know what, we're all going through this battle in our own heads. Fucking just let go of it and get your stuff out there and, and believe in it, you know what I mean? You've got to remember, we're in an industry, gal, where we can spend two weeks on a track, send it to a label and they don't like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or longer. Mm -hmm. You spend longer on a track. Like, you know, you're buzzing all the way through the, the process of writing the track, you know, and you get there. You know, you've got to remember it's an, in an industry where you're constantly getting, constantly people are telling you, nah, it's not good enough. Yeah. You know? thanks, thanks for your debt. You know, I'm, thankfully I'm kind of by that stage now. You know, I've, 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 I'm not being. I think your own labels help with that, Davey. No, I don't, mate. I no. think sometimes that makes you lazy. Right. Some, some, I, I, I do. Sometimes I think it makes you, unless you've got that quality control, 
Because see when you've got your own label, you can put a kick drum and a hi-hat out if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to tell you it's shite, are they? I know it's uh, label. You know. I know what you mean. It's a fair point. It's a fair point. It gets you lazy in the sense of not maybe trying to hit the biggest labels because you're like, well, I really like it, so I'm going to put it out in my label. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I wouldn't... Maybe that's, the, maybe that's the wrong way of putting it. Lazy. I wouldn't say it's lazy, but you don't want to get into it. You, I don't know. You, I think you need to be... You need somebody telling you that third party telling you, no, that's no good enough sometimes. I totally get that. I totally get that. It, it does... It must differ from person to person. But I certainly feel like having that like, I don't know, say like on Juno Beats or something like that, like, sending it to them and, and you know, going through all of that process and then they knock it back, then it's like, well, they're the top, they're the top ones. There's obviously a reason for it. You go back to the drawing board, you end up better. Mm-hmm. You end up kind of, you know, not resting on your laurels and just going, well, my label, I'll just stick it out then. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And, and that's what, the, that, what you're saying there about why you'd feel maybe lazy, but then that totally, totally makes sense. Totally makes the thing sense. is then, it shows you the importance of maybe not starting the label too soon, man, and actually building and establishing or whatever, and just because that quality control only comes with experience, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. A great point, it really is, because we are living in an age where everybody is starting the label, which again, watch we start at the start of the call, we were saying more ownership to the artist, band cap, things like that. Technically, it is a good thing, but... With that comes a lot of rubbish music and a lot of not high standards. Um, so I, it's, it's interesting. I've not backed tracks that other labels have signed that I, that I would say that are maybe slightly bigger than mine. Mm. But it, I just didn't like it. You know, I didn't, I didn't think maybe, maybe the guy running that label wasn't he a, I don't know, maybe he was he an out-and-out producer. Maybe he thought... Was doing good that night? Yeah. He's feeling good that night. Aye, that's it, mate. You know, I just, I just, I mean, there's, there's, there's tracks that I've knocked back and, you know, that other labels have signed. I think it's sometimes it's just, it's what, aye, it's whatever, whatever you're feeling that particular day, whoever. Sometimes the problem is with labels as well is if we get guys sourcing tracks, Guys that are, I need to watch what I'm saying here. I'm not going to, you know, guys that are sourcing tracks for the label. Mm-hmm. And it's very, it's very hard sometimes to get by that guy because that guy might have a wee bit of a chip on his shoulder as well. Aye, 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 aye. You know, you know what I'm saying? You're just trying to, get by that, you're trying to get by the guard at the gate. Yeah. You speak to the top man. Yeah, but yeah. But the guard at the gate doesn't quite like the shoes that you've got on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, as a label owner, obviously a lot of the guys and girls that watch our our shows and, and follow the studio are all up-and-comers or established or whatnot. So what what key bits of advice would you maybe give to someone who's looking to sign to your label or to a label, being a label boss? What, what think, are you looking for when somebody sends you an email? I mean, I think first and foremost, don't send me a SoundCloud link with 30 plays on it. First thing. I, I, just, I just don't even listen to it. I'll just yeah. delete it. Mm-hmm. That's a, for me. That's the most important thing. Sometimes, you know. Being you exclusive. Uh, was that sorry? Being exclusive, maybe like have uh, that in mind. Be, be clever about it. Yeah. You know, send out to five people, take it down and upload it again. Uh, you know, you know, you don't have to just send it out to thirty labels. Yeah, for thirty plays to for me to click on it and there's X amount of plays on it. And I'm just going to well. Yeah. Is SoundCloud something you prefer? Like, the, do you prefer it being submitted on SoundCloud or Dropbox? Is there any preference? I just, I just, on I just, I just prefer clicking the, the link once Aye. and, and be able to listen to it. I don't want to be we transferring it. I don't want to be downloading it. Nah. Every time I'm downloading it, somebody's phoned me. Aye. I'm a wee queue and a riff or a hi hat or whatever. You're away. You're distracted. You're off again. Aye, aye, totally. Put it. It's making it easy as you can, isn't it? Like, for the person you're trying to get their attention of, make it as easy as possible, surely. Yeah, yeah. and I think just, I think you just, I think like we spoke about in previous podcasts, I just think you, you, you have to, you know, you have to be sending tracks to labels. Don't finish a track and just pick 10, 20 labels. You know, for me, see, you're writing a track, target the, the label signs a track. You know, target the label. Mm-hmm. And, Target what type of sound that they're going for mm-hmm. and write if that's your vibe, if it's after dark, if it's area, if it's outburst, listen to the last 20. Steve, if you're doing a techno track, 
Aye. one at code. You're going to listen to the last 20, 30 drum code tracks and see what the actual, see what the, you know, how uh, the land, you know, what the flow of the tracks are. Makes sense. What's what's been done, what not to do, what other artists' identity are, like... Yeah. Yeah. So all of this are day, like, drum code don't want to sign another Enrico San Giuliano. They don't want to sign another Kelly like, or whatever. They want to sign the next artist. Aye, they want you to sound like them, but different. Different. Uh, sound like them, but different, aye, totally. So they do. You know, they want, Adam Bayer wants to be able to play it in his set. Yeah. yeah. You know, aye, you know, all these artists are brilliant, you know, but they want a bit of all the artists in a Stephen Kirkwood track. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Other track, you know, it's me and Juna Beach. You need to sound. You need to have that sound because they have their own sound. They do, and that's a good thing for a label as well, isn't it? Knowing that where where they fit. Aye, because it's like back in the day, you go into a record shop, you don't even need to listen to the track. Oh, it's in Juna Beach. He's one of them. Aye, I'll take it. I'll like it. You know, you know what you're gonna get. That you can't beat that when you know there's a style and it's up your street and you go right. Well, I know everything's good. And I, I've said that to you a few times. I, I, you definitely it's have. like when you hear that, you go, "They'll never do it like that again." And then it keeps feeding you stuff that's similar. You're like that, ah, yes, you know, on repeat. Right, we've got about three minutes left, so I've got one more question to you, David. We've been asking every other guest, right? Have you got a recommendation for a DJ set or an artist or something that maybe people have they usually heard of or maybe? You know, just something that you love, that you listen to, it's your go-to thing or something that you could recommend. Nah, again, I, I, it's not so much a, an, an artist, but I think I've said um, in a couple other, maybe, I don't think I, I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned it in the last podcast that we've done, but I'm a huge fan of Taiko. Yeah. You know, as, as you know, you know, so, you know, if you're wanting a wee bit of inspiration for melodies or, you know, just something a wee bit different that you think you could add to your own productions, melody-wise, you know, Tycho's a great, a great artist to to to, to listen to, and um, and DJ sets just pretty much it and be me. Definitely, This is the last one now. Uh, this is the last one. I mean, I'm loving playing. I mean, I've not done a. I mean, these lockdown sets. I've not done a trans lockdown set yet. I'll, I'll do one this weekend for Trans Family LA. But the last two lockdown sets I've done, I've been old school. Aye. Yeah. You know, just. Started 1990 to Forbes is empty, on it? Hi, Forbes is empty. You oh, know, yeah. it's um, you know, it's just it's just an absolute joy playing that music again. Right. right. So we're we're wrap it up, Davey. Pleasure. That just flo that just flies by every time we chat to you, mate. But um, it was great getting a wee catch up again. Awesome. Some man. Thanks, Davey. All right, guys. Catch you soon, mate. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Go until next one, then. That's it. Right. Another right. 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 Right.